Welcome back everybody to Brick System Brothers. We've got another tutorial today and we're going to show how to add a mock to Rebrickable. Uh, so this is the mock I'll be working with, just a little piano model. And Rebrickable is a website for mocks, for Lego collectors. Um, I use it for hosting my own mocks and also a lot of my digital inventory stuff. So I have looked at Rebrickable in depth, um, just going through all the features. It was about a 40 minute video. If you don't want to watch all that, that's fine. Um, but if there's stuff that comes up that I reference here that you don't know about, you might want to look into it somewhere else. I'm just going to be talking about mocks today uh, for this video. So the first thing you're going to want to do uh, when you log in, you do need an account here, is to go to mocks and submit a mock. And that will just bring up this whole six step process and everything is kind of just fill in the box and uh, you'll pretty much be doing that uh, once you are ready to go. And the other thing that I want to mention is you can upload any kind of mock to Brickable. It doesn't have to be a digital model, um, but it's actually pretty easy to use digital models when you're making a listing for a mock on Brickable just in terms of filling in the part inventory, um, maybe getting a picture if you don't have a picture already, um, and probably the easiest of all of the digital builders well, that I'm familiar with is Studio. So that's what I'm using today. Um, not to say that you can't use Digital Designer or Mecha Bricks or something else, <clears throat> but Studio is what I'm familiar with and what I'm going to be using as the example. So once you have a model kind of built up that you like and everything is good to go, um, just kind of get it to a point where you're happy with it. You're not going to be able to make big changes down the road. You will be able to update minor things, but you kind of want to do all of your editing here in the, the digital builder phase. Um, before you go ahead and, and export or do anything else, go to this little check issues exclamation point, the little yellow thing. Click on that and it should pull up anything that is not quite right with your model. Um, I've added a 2x4 plate in an incorrect color. And this is just saying, all right, we know you can do this in a digital builder because you can put any piece with any color. But if you want to go ahead and build this model, it's actually not possible because the 2x4 plate has not been produced in red. So you can't actually buy this piece. Um, and so to, ch to fix this, um, and you might have to do it with quite a few pieces. You might not have to do it at all. I just added this in to show. Um, you just kind of select this piece. So here in Check Issues, there's only one piece to change, and it's this 2x4 brick. I'm just going to change it to dark red. So that will just change that color, and now we have no problems at all with the model. We'll close out of the warning box, and it goes back to our um, inventory here. Another thing that you can do to kind of bring a better level of quality to your mocks is make your own custom instructions, which can be done right here with the instruction builder. I'm not going to do that today. That takes up a lot of time, and it's probably something you'd want to do if you were going to be selling a mock. This one I'm just going to put up kind of as a free listing, so it's going to be a digital inventory, a digital file only, um, specifically a studio file, which is the IO file type. So I fixed all the issues here with the mock. All these pieces uh, are able to be bought on Bricklink or somewhere else. They, at least these pieces exist. That's all we, we really care about at this point. So go ahead and save this. And at this point, if you don't have a picture already for your mock, you're going to want to make a render. So rendering is pretty easy to do with um, Bricklink Studio. You know, once you have this render thing selected, it will open up a little dialog box here and you can really customize however you want it to look. I'm just going to kind of position it something like that maybe, where the bench is visible. Yeah, change the angle. This doesn't really matter too much. There's a lot of things you can change in the dialogue um, and there's a lot here. So don't worry too much about getting everything exactly right. You just kind of need a, a, an image of what this mock looks like for people to see when they're browsing through to see if they actually want to build it. Um, and so it's not crucial to get everything looking absolutely perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and render this. I'll speed up the video and then we'll get back to the, uh, the process.
So now that we have a rendered image of our mock, we can go back and start putting in the info on Rebrickable. So, you know, this stuff doesn't really matter. You want it to be somewhat descriptive, but um, it's pretty much up to you at the end of the day. So mock name is going to be upright piano and bench. Yeah, that's all, that's all there is to it. Theme, this will kind of give you the default themes that Lego has put out. Um, it's searchable. Uh, what would I want to put this in? I'm going to go ahead and put this in the ideas theme just for fun even though I haven't submitted this to ideas. And I actually designed this quite a while ago, but I made enough updates that it's maybe considered a new 2021 design. So description here, I'll just add something. You know, you wanna have a little bit of a description. That doesn't have to be really fancy. And once you do save and next step, this will kind of create uh, something on your profile that you can come back to. So at this point, you could actually kind of close the window, um, log out of Rubricable and go do something else and come back to this later. So as long as you have that first step done, that kind of creates a draft of your mock. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and go all the way through. Uh, at this point, you can cancel and delete, but like I said, you can also leave and it will stay here. So upload image from file, upload image from web. I'm just gonna upload the render that I made. I saved it in the studio folder and it should be called Upright Piano. So we will open that up. It's loading in here, and there it is. Now yeah, that looks like a pretty good representation of my model. And the image, pretty crucial, you do wanna have some kind of template that shows what people are going to build, especially if you are planning on selling these um, as a mock or in instructions. You definitely wanna have some kind of image representing. Again, in Studio, it's pretty easy. You just make a little render. Um, they ask you not to, but if you aren't able to render because of your computer's limitations, you can take a screenshot. At least you wanna have something to show as your mock image here. So once you've got that loaded in, save and next step. Uh, here's where you can kind of link if you have this model on Flickr, if you've done a YouTube video about it, you can put these in here, but it's not required. Um, at the moment, I don't have anything else to link to, so I'll just save and next step. Uh, and now we get to the instructions. So this is pretty pretty much the part of your model that will be represented as your mock on Rebrickable. Um, and it's one of the reasons that people use Rebrickable for mocks is so that they can actually sell instructions. Um, and that's kind of where the distinction is made here. So if you do want to sell instructions, you have to go over to this tab. For sale as a premium mock, there's a couple requirements. Um, you can set the cost here. You also have to link in, I think, a way to pay with either PayPal or something else. Um, you can send people to a different site to actually buy these, but I just have it like hosted here on Rebrickable. It's a lot simpler just to put it up for free to have you know a little community mock on here. So type of instructions. Um, PDF is definitely the best thing you could do where you actually have gone in and made uh, kind of tailored instructions that would be easier to follow, similar to what Lego does. Um, but in this case, it's a small enough model that we're going to upload the studio file itself. Um, here's a, another option again. You can go to a different site that hosts the instructions. And no matter what kind of thing you choose up here, you also need to upload the instructions separately. So again, we're gonna do add file, select the file from disk, in my uh, studio folder here, I have this saved as Upright Piano. Open that in, and that's all there is to it. You click Upload, it brings it in. File upload it successfully. You can also add additional models or submodels, any of that stuff. So here we have the instruction file. Um, I've opted to go with just hosting the 3D Studio file as the instructions. Um, it's not the best thing to do, but if it's a smaller mock, that's probably the easiest thing to do because um, you've put all the work in in Studio already. Uh, whoever wants to view this can just open it up in Studio and kind of work their way backwards through the digital model, through the 3D file to see how you built it. Mock type normal. Uh, you, you have a couple of options here. You can do a normal mock, an alternate build, or a modification. So. An alternate build, kind of self-explanatory, if you get a Lego set and you use the pieces in just that set to build a different mock, that's an alternate build. A modification would be taking 
a given Lego set or a given mock, changing a few things on it. It's definitely still recognizable as the original set or mock, but you've updated a few things. So you made a slight modification. A normal mock is just kind of something completely original, like my piano. So I'll just be leaving this as normal. We'll go to save and next step. And now we get to the inventory. So this is um, what Rebrickable uses to determine the pieces necessary to build the model. Again, really handy to have a digital file um, built up for your mock because at this point we're just going to upload the file. Rebrickable knows how to look in an IO file and choose all the pieces. So we are going to import from disk, select a file. I'm going to select my upright piano file again. And the fixed molds option, um, kind of a handy thing you can do if you have an older mold, it will automatically update it. Uh, I'm going to leave it unchecked for now just because I don't want it to change anything. Uh, I'm not sure if there's anything that would be updated, so I'm just going to leave it unchecked. Click append parts, and it's already going down here. You don't have to do anything else. Error, some parts were not imported. The bar 1L with clip is disabled. Okay, so that that one issue here, this silver bar that I used for the pedals down on the bottom did not get imported. Uh, some parts were also changed. So the keyboard print was changed. So that's something that Rebrickable uses a different internal number for. So that's fine. The orange music note print was changed again with the internal number. Uh, the plate one by one with solid stud was changed. Just a few minor things that have to be switched over to the way that Rebrickable manages an inventory of Lego pieces. So the warnings, just letting you know that's what was going on. It should all be fine. Um, the pedal part I'll have to look at. But now we can close this and see that we have everything right here. There are a few things with the red square around them. So let's see what we can do about these. Edit this inventory part. Dark red. Yeah, that's uh, that color is fine, so that should be okay. I think at this point, red just means I don't have it already in my collection. So red isn't necessarily something that means I need to change it. And I do need to try to add in these little pedals. So let's go back to my studio file and see what number we have here, 48729. Let's see if I can add this in. I want to add part. 48729. We have the bar 1L with clip. Okay, so this is why it got kicked off. Now that I've opened this up, I can see Rebrickable has two separate entries for this piece because there's a slight mold difference. So instead of trying to designate it to one of these entries, Rebrickable just said, we're kicking it out of the inventory. You can fix it yourself. So now I need to determine if I'm going to use the A or the B variant. I think I'll just go with the A. Uh, quantity here is three. The color I'm going to set to black and we're going to add part. Okay, so that's been added. Now, if I want to change this color, I want to change it to a color that I actually know is available. So edit this inventory part. When I click on the color, up here on the top, it gives me all of the colors that this has been available in before. I think I'll just use the metallic silver color. It might be a little more expensive, but somewhat realistic to being used as a piano pedal. We will click save part. And now that has been added in uh, a color that's at least similar to what I had in the original mock. And everything else here looks just fine. We've got our piano print. We've got our music note print. The other pieces in the piano are all here and accounted for. All right, so the inventory is done. We can do save and next step. Any notes for the admin? So if this is your first mock, this will be sent in to be reviewed by an admin. Uh, once they determine everything looks good, it will be published. Um, once you have a published mock or two, you might be able to uh, auto get your mocks auto approved, which means as soon as you submit it, it's available for people to view and download. Um, so if you do want the admin to know something about your mock, that's where you can type a little message here. For the most part, um, this should just be ready to go, ready to send off. We can submit mock for approval. And in my case, I think I have auto approval because I've submitted a couple of mocks already. And so this now shows up ready to go, ready to download um, to any user on Rebrickable. And that's all there is to it. This upright piano and bench mock has now been submitted to the platform that can be downloaded right here. Um, if people 
We want to submit a photo that can be done right here. The inventory just shows which pieces are available. And now that this is um, on the site, you can actually sort it by price and see what's going to be most expensive here. Yeah, I had a hunch it would be this, this tan piece. It's not very common. Um, if you do want to kind of optimize your mock to be as cost effective as possible, you can look and see which pieces are costing people the most and try to change those to a different piece, maybe an updated color, maybe a different mold that's more current. Uh, there's a couple different things you can do to kind of bring the cost down. Rubricable makes an estimate of the cost based on the price of these pieces new. If you have a mock, especially a smaller one, if you just have you know a little physical model built up and you want to put it on Rubricable, I would really suggest just build it in Studio or build it in Digital Designer and then use that digital file to take care of the inventory, um, kind of just as a fail-safe way to make sure everything is getting added in. Uh, otherwise, to, to kind of build up this inventory here, you're looking at deconstructing whatever you have and adding things one piece at a time, which can get kind of tedious. Um, and, you know, if you have something built up in a digital file, you have like a little backup of your model just in case something happens to the one that you have in real life. So yeah, I would suggest going the digital route for as many mocks as possible. That's kind of what I've done um, for all of the ones that I have submitted on my account and it just seems to me to be a pretty good option to go with. And that's all I have to say this time for adding a mock. A pretty straightforward process. There's a couple different steps. Um, just looking at you know where you save stuff, keep, keep track of that, keep your folders organized because that will help a lot. Um, and then it's pretty straightforward after that. So you can't really go wrong. Thanks for watching guys. Um, I can do tutorials for LDD. I can do tutorials for you know, just like a basic handheld mock without any studio or digital stuff if you want. Let me know down in the comments what you want to see and I will work on putting it up. We'll see you guys later.